Hey everyone, so today we are going to look for Petiloteria subfusca here in Sri Lanka. It's an highland species actually, so we are quite high up here um, at around 1900 meters above sea level. So it's, it's uh, chilly here. Um, we have temperatures around 22-23 degrees in the sun. Um, so a lot easier uh, to walk around. Actually, we are heading into a public park. Um, of course, they also occur in the rainforest nearby, but much of the rainforest here is a protected zone, so you cannot go in there without any permission. Um, these parks here, they do have a lot of trees, so we are going to look for them and hopefully we'll find a few specimens. Um, it's my, my favorite Petilotheria species. Actually, I'm not a big fan of Asian uh, tarantula spiders, but the uh, Petiloteria with its really distinctive colors They're quite impressive and Subfusca is the one I look uh, forward to see the most uh, Because this is a communal species, so maybe we're lucky and we'll find maybe two or three specimens within the same branch so Yeah, we'll Try our best to to find a few specimens here Yeah, so nice, we just uh, found an adult male of uh, Pertiloteria subfusca here in this park. Um, actually, it's not the first one we found. Uh, there were like three other specimens we found first, but it was not possible for us to like get them out or tickle them out during the day. Um, this one's an adult male. I'll just go a little bit closer. Um, yeah, this pretty pretty interesting to find actually because normally I don't find any adult males um, so yeah it's completely different colored like totally brown with a few like yellow stripes on the legs but unlike the females they're just pale looking so we'll continue our search for the females of this species we found one already but it was not possible to tickle them out so yeah, let's see if we're successful or not. So for a few years now, there is a huge debate about the species regarding Petiloteria subfusca. So actually there are two species under the same name in the hobby. One is known as Petiloteria subfusca highland and the other one is known as Petiloteria subfusca lowland or just Petiloteria species lowland. Some people even call them Petilateria bara. What we're seeing here is that there are two really distinctive species occurring in the same area, but they live in a total different environment. Like the species we are seeing here is Petilateria subfusca highland. So the highland species is much smaller. It actually is the smallest Petilateria species known to date. Um, this small Petilateria species does not have anything in common with the big massive Petilateria species we call lowland, even though they right, live right next to each other. So Petilotera subfusca got described in 1895 by Reginald Ines Pocock around, from around the region of Kandy in central Sri Lanka. So the town of Kandy, or nowadays the city of Kandy, is about 5 to 700 meters above sea level. So it's not lowland forest like we find Petilotera ornata in but it is not high altitude um, forest like the specimen you see in the picture. So when the original Petrotere subfusca is described from the region around Kandy, we should really think about if this Petrotere subfusca we're seeing here and the same 
we are calling Pertilopteria zapusca in the hobby is really Pertilopteria zapusca. So maybe this is an undescribed species and we'll see in the future some different name for them. So this is the second specimen we found here in this park. Um, actually the second specimen we found within a cypress tree. So these cypress trees are not native to Sri Lanka, but uh, obviously these uh, Pertilateria species like to live within these trees because of all these uh, holes the trees have. So we'll continue searching, uh, especially looking for this kind of tree here in this park and maybe we'll see uh, or find another or bigger specimen with a bit more colors. Uh, yeah, so here is a closer look again. Um, it's not that big actually. So these subadult males of this species don't really have the vibrant color. You can already see where the color will go after they reach maturity. So even though they're really nice to find in the wild, we're still looking for a vibrantly colored female. So in case you're keeping Petilotera subfusca back home, you should really keep them at low temperatures. Uh, what we're seeing here is we have 17.2 degrees inside the hole where the specimen was found. So it's about 20 centimeters deep into the tree itself. And outside the burrow we have 21.4 degrees. So sometimes when the sun comes up, we have here about 25, 26 degrees, but this just for a few minutes. So all in all, keep the temperature low for keeping Pertilotera subfusca back at home. So around Sri Lanka you'll find a lot of monkey families playing around. Um, they are potential predators to Pertilotera. So this species of Pertilotera has to defend themselves occasionally from the monkeys. Maybe that's why their venom is so potent against humans. And this actually might be another food source. So besides the crickets and roaches, there are also some reptiles living in these creviches of the trees. So I really think uh, this is uh, the best place to find Pertilotera subfusca. It's somehow an open secret, like among um, arachno enthusiasts. Everyone knows where this locality is, but I'm not going to say it public here. But uh, it's, it's easy because you can walk within this park like on trails and there are a lot of trees, a lot of cypress trees, which the species obviously prefers. So in case you're going to search for Petiloteria by yourself in Sri Lanka, you really have to watch out uh, for like local people because usually they don't care for spiders, but if they see that foreign people care for their spiders they're not happy about it so maybe you get uh, issues with the police um, there are a lot of stories about it so I try to really film and be like low profile here in, in Sri Lanka so Nice! So uh, we finally found an adult female of Pertilatera subfusca. Um, it's freshly molted, so the colors are extremely beautiful. Um, they have this pinkish purple uh, glands on the femurs and of course the yellow setae all over the legs. So honestly, not much more to tell. We found about uh, six different specimens here in this park and we tickled three of them out. It was an easy task because uh, the burrow itself is not that deep in the tree. 
and uh, there is nowhere to go so actually this is the first adult female for me to see in the wild and uh, happy to share it with you That was it, that's the end of the video. If you liked it, please leave a comment below. We'll answer all of your questions, even the ones regarding your pet tarantulas. And make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications on the left side so you always get an email when there is a new video from us. So yeah, see you in the next video then.